the easiest way to actually identify open intelligence is to just stop thinking for a moment. So not to, it's not a practice about not thinking, so please don't confuse it with that. So just to have the introduction to this comprehensive intelligence, we can stop thinking to identify what is at the basis. When you stop thinking for a moment, boom, your power to know is identified. This power to know is open intelligence. Maybe you thought open intelligence was something much grander than your own power to know. I, I did. I thought it was something else. In the books and trainings that I was involved in before coming to Balanced View, it made it sound like it was some kind of special state or lifetimes away. You know, I had no idea what it really was. And when I was given the introduction, just to stop thinking, identify alertness, clarity, cognizance, what's looking, and to just rest deeply, I was like, wow, that's it. That is it. That is open intelligence. That's what I've been looking for. Now, the, the other way, the other way of using our intelligence is to focus in on the data, the descriptions, the information. Focusing in and emphasizing only the thoughts, emphasizing only the emotions, and emphasizing only the sensations to come up with what is the nature of reality. So we base the nature of our reality on fleeting descriptions, and we've come up with loads of complicated ideas about what it means to be human in this cosmos. You know, all of the thinking. We think we need positive thoughts and we can't have negative thoughts. If we have negative thoughts, it means that we do bad things. If we have positive thoughts, it means we're a good person. So that's just one way of how thoughts define humans. But how many of us only ever have positive thoughts? Nobody. So what does that mean? We're all bad then, I guess. <laughs> Do you see? I mean, that's a load of rubbish. I mean, if, if, we're, if we live our entire lifetime thinking we're a bad person because of some bad thinking, that, that's just not a correct assumption. That's just something we've learned and, and adopted. So here, we're giving you the opportunity, all of us the opportunity to let that belief system be as it is. Like you're letting the air be as it is right now. You're not trying to do anything with this air. When you have a, a negative thought, let it be as it is for short moments. Identify open intelligence in that moment. Open intelligence is the source of the data. It is the data. They're inseparable. Open intelligence what we identified, your power to know, inseparable from the thinking, the emoting, the sensations. Very directly, you can look in your own experience and think, how are my <laughs> thoughts different from this power to know? How are they somehow separate? They don't have an independent power and meaning of their own. The data don't. They are inseparable from open intelligence, like the color blue in the sky are inseparable. Now you ask, well, what, what the difference does that make? I mean, basically, when you start letting all data be as they are, you naturally start to emphasize open intelligence more, and then all of the data do not inform anything, really. They don't inform, they don't provide the truth value in that moment in terms of what to say, think, feel, and do. So, like, right now, I could be having all kinds of negative thoughts, and if I were to believe in them, if I were to emphasize them, I would run off the stage right now. <coughs> you know, what is everyone thinking about me? I hope they understand it. You know, the list goes on and on about all the things we can be thinking. So very powerfully, we can let thoughts be exactly as they are, and we start to see, just like if I draw a line in the air right now, it self-releases on its own. It, you know, I didn't even need for me to erase it. It just self-releases. All data naturally self-release, like a line drawn in water. And for me personally, I just started to recognize immense freedom in this. I was no longer bound by my thinking. 
because I have, you know, I've, I think a lot, and if I were to base my life satisfaction, sense of flourishing, sense of empowerment based on my thinking, it, that was a lifetime of ups and downs, never feeling, living to my potential, not feeling a connection with people. So you can actually, you, it's good to point out the downsides of reification, of only giving meaning to the descriptions of data. You see it very clearly. So then very powerfully, well, it is very powerful to let everything be as it is. I mean, you get to experience everything fully and completely. Initially, when you find yourself emphasizing data, and that means applying labels to it, you'll make consciously or unconsciously. This is positive, this is negative, and this is neutral. Initially, when you find yourself doing this, it's a potent reminder. Now that you've been introduced to open intelligence, those moments are a potent reminder to take short moments of open intelligence, to emphasize open intelligence for short moments and repeat that many times. So in the beginning, initially recognizing that potent reminder. And you can keep it that simple. You don't need to look for all this profound meaning in data. Very naturally and gradually, we start to have insights. This has been my experience. Looking for insights and really wanting insights, I couldn't contrive that. That's what I was trying to do before in prolonged sitting, trying to contrive some sort of powerful insight and hold on to it. When I just started letting everything be as it is in short moments, the insights naturally started to come. I could see very directly how I was either indulging in data, I was either avoiding it, or I was either replacing it. So then I was like, well now what? Short moments, there's a lot of data happening, what do I do with it all? So you heard earlier also that we have the four mainstays, which it's a lifestyle really. It's in my life, it's a lifestyle. I can't separate out my life from what we call the Four Mainstays lifestyle. Just like this chair has all four legs and it's supportive and safe, that's what the Four Mainstays lifestyle is. It's a means for gaining access to this comprehensive intelligence. <coughs> So, you know, we all have very specific life circumstances. You know, we want to live in a harmonious world. We want to have a career. We want to have relationships. And there's lots of data around it. But it's important not to say something, a general statement about that it's all just data, therefore, what's the point? Of course, all of this is data, inseparable from open intelligence. But the crucial key point is that the data and open intelligence are inseparable, and it's an expanse of benefit. Initially, it, it may not seem that all data are beneficial. It just, it just doesn't. But the more you let them be as they are, and you just, I mean, you look around at nature's intelligence, it's magnificent. How does all of this stuff grow and manifest? It's totally incredible. How does this body work? It's totally incredible. We don't have to fuss around to make everything work inside. But we are that same intelligence. This beautiful, powerful, beneficial, open intelligence. That's what data is. We start to see that all data are exalted, not some enemies. For me, that came about gradually. At first, I recognized relief in letting everything be as it is. And then, through reliance on the four mainstays, the short moments of open intelligence, when I naturally remembered to do so, relying on a trainer for guidance, for support, for empowerment, when I relied on a training that was providing <coughs> vital instructions, empowering words, and then relying on a community, people, just normal people like all of us and seeing the shifts in them, this really started to become my lived experience. But I had the 100% commitment to just test this, take it all the way. I was really tired of reification. 
I, I just reached the point of I don't want to indulge, avoid, replace anymore because I see it's like bumping it up against a glass ceiling and I can't figure out how to break through this. So then, you know, I can just share that, you know, limitations like feeling not good enough or depression or extreme anxiety or general paranoia or just disinterest. You know, I was so disinterested in all the world conflicts. You turn on the news and it's like yet another conflict. I mean, that is not inspiring and that is not motivating. That was very demoralizing to really see what is really happening. And then to, you know, having my own company and seeing I can't even hold this company together because there's always some sort of conflict. I don't know how to relate to them open-heartedly. They don't know how to relate open-heartedly. So I could very clearly see the limitations. And now I find that those limitations aren't... I haven't been emphasizing the limitations. I've been letting all limiting ideas be exactly as they are. That's how I test it very directly in my experience. So if you have a, your own company or if you, have, if you work within a company and there are any challenges, test this out. Let the thoughts, emotions, sensations be as they are. It doesn't mean you become non-active. You really start to open up to a powerful and beneficial way. You know, I started to recognize complete mental and emotional stability regardless of my thoughts and emotions. I started to recognize more of an openness to actually listen to people. I could never listen to people before. I would be like two minutes and then I would put some earphones in and walk away or something. So an ability to listen to people when there was just before like an instant judgment of I don't like you or I, I like you. I mean just seeing this open up in all aspects of life. There's too many to list. I mean, they're all just pouring into my head right now. It's like, I feel healthier, I feel happier. I, I was happy to begin with, but I'm happier. I feel more talented, I feel more energy. And I'm not making it all up, it's just a natural thing. And that's why we, we ask people to come up and share and you hear the direct examples of people. I didn't cultivate, I didn't have to sit down and write diaries about how much I want to have all this extra energy and feel more creative and have better relationships. I didn't have to do positive affirmations. I didn't have to do manifestation. I didn't have to do any of this. I took short moments. I let everything be as it is. I relied on the Four Mainstays, which is what we're all doing together. And very naturally, everyone just starts to glow with... You're glowing. You're just like... You would stand out in a crowd for sure. You would just light up a whole crowd. I mean, you can see very directly the impact even one person has. One person relying on open intelligence has the ability to in affect a whole group of people. One person not indulging, avoiding, or replacing, and relying on powerful, beneficial, open intelligence, it does affect the whole group. Check that out the next time you're with a group of people. I mean, it's people recognize something in you that's it's like... Look how stable they are. When everyone else is running around like chickens with their head cut off, this person's stable. <laughs> and it doesn't mean life becomes boring, and it doesn't at all. I mean, I don't, I don't think I ever feel bored anymore. I always felt bored. This need to criticize other people and talk. Yeah, gossip is just subtly putting people down, plain and simple or overtly putting people down. Do you want to continue doing that? Or do you want to really exalt your friends and family and people you don't even know? You know, we need to stand up for empowerment at some point, and why not do it now? Otherwise, you're just saying, well, they'll do it. They'll fix the problem, and I can continue on with my irresponsible ways. So you just make that commitment, you know? It's, when you let everything be as it is, it's just 
again, like letting the air in the space be as it is. You're not accepting it and you're not rejecting it. So when you test this out, accepting it, would it, that's just giving it more data, applying data to data. It's like trying to rearrange space to make it better space. Rejecting it is the same thing. Allowing it to be as it is, it's, it's just something very new to all of us. I mean, we don't give you many other instructions, and that may seem frustrating and irritating, but damn it, it's powerful. It, that's why we emphasize it again and again and again. Let everything be as it is, and you naturally unfold into your totally powerful, beneficial nature.